Welcome, welcome back again to this session. So during this session, we are going to focus on another very simple topic called SADS. So SADS is a topic, of course, in Form 3, as you can see from the classification. So in SADS, what do we need to know? Number one, a SAD represents what we talk about uh, rational and irrational numbers. So uh, we will derive the topic SADS from the classification of numbers into two, either a rational or an irrational number. So for rational numbers, then you expect that we are, that number is going to have an exact root. For example, if we talk about root 4, then we already know the answer is 2. When you talk about root 25, you know the answer is 5. When you talk about root 625, the answer is 25. These numbers, therefore, are said to be rational numbers. Why? Because you can get a definite root. That's a rational number. For irrational numbers, therefore, it therefore follows that uh, these numbers do not have an exact root. For example, if you have root 22, we do not have an exact number which will give us uh, the, the, the square root of 22 without it being a decimal fraction. So in that case, we say that that number is an irrational number. Uh, when take a number like root, say, 37, you can already guess the answer. You or we will definitely get a decimal fraction. So in that case, that number is uh, an irrational number, an irrational number. So if a number does not have an exact root, then it is said to be an irrational number. And in, the, in most cases, therefore, you will most likely, unless you're told to, give, to simplify your answer, you're going to leave it under the root sign. So when you leave the answer, say root 7, since you cannot get a definite root, if you leave it the answer as such, being root 7, then you say that that number has been written in sad form. So sad form, in short, involves numbers without a definite root, and you're going to leave your answer under the root sign. So in that case, that number is said to be a an irrational number. And that gives us this that we are calling a sads. So a sad is a number, uh, or, or rather a sad involves uh, numbers whose definite root cannot be gotten. And in that case, we leave it under the root sign. Then in that, we, we call them sads. So that is what you need to know as far as sads is concerned. That is what we are calling a sad. So I want us to focus now on the next thing, which is operation of SADS. So operation on SADS. So operation obviously involves the basic mathematical operations, that is addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So we can start with addition and subtraction. Addition and subtraction. So addition, if uh, you have a sad, say sad three plus sad three. So in this case, if you add these two sads, the best way to add them is you think about it in terms of, say, let sad 3 be A. 
So in this case, we shall be adding a plus a, which will give us 2a. But a is sub 3, which therefore means but a is sub 3, which therefore means our answer will be 2, a and a is sub 3, so the answer is 2 sub 3. Take another example, 2 sub 5 plus 3 sub 5. So in this case, if you are to think about it in the same approach, let sub 5 be sub 5 be a. So in place of sub 5, we replace with a. So we have 2a plus 3a, which will give us 5a. But remember, a is sub 5, so you have 5 sub 5 as the answer. So you will need to take note that this number, the coefficient of the sad, the coefficient of the sad is called the order. So if you're asked what is the order of this sad 2 sad 5, this is a, a, a sad of order 2. This one is a sad of order 3. In this case, the coefficient of sad 3 is, uh, is 1. So in that case, but remember, when you write root 3, that means the number that comes before this is 2, square root. Square root, the number here is 2. But when we add, we just add them directly as they are. So the, uh, the order here is 2, the order here is 3. Uh, so that is how we add sads. Uh, you might want to uh, think of such. 3, sad uh, 7, plus 2, sad 5. So you will notice that in this case, these uh, sads are different. This sad 7, this is sad 5. So if these sads are different, then it is not possible to add because there is no way we can say, let uh, sad a, 7 be a, and also sad 5 be a. It's not possible because these two numbers are not the same. They are different. So in that case, this remains to be as it is. So since these sads are of different, are, are different, you are going to leave the answer as it is. 3 sub 7 plus 2 sub 5. That is your answer. You can't add these sads. These sads cannot be added. Uh, the same case applies to division. Let me erase this. So you will notice that uh, when it comes to division, take an example, uh, I mean subtraction, not division. Subtraction. If you take, for example, sub 5 minus, uh, I mean 3 sub 5 minus sub 5. So take the same approach. Let. Uh, sad 5 be a. So in that case, we are going to have 3a minus a, which gives us 2a. But a is sad 5, so our answer will be 2 sad 5. Uh, just like in our last example in addition, you will again notice that if you take an example, 5 sub 7 minus 2 sub 3. Again, these two numbers are not alike. So there is no way we are going to say let log, I mean not log but sub 7 be A and also sub 3 be A. These numbers are not the same. So our answer will be 
the question. 5 plus 7 minus 2 plus 3. So nothing changes. That remains as it were originally. That is uh, all you need to know in as far as addition and subtraction of SARS is concerned. So the next thing now is a multiplication of SADs. Let me erase this. So let's see what happens in multiplication of SADs. How is it different from addition and subtraction? So for multiplication of SADs, take an example of uh, 3 SAD 2 times 2 SAD 3. So this is a bit different. You will need to multiply the coefficients of the numbers in SAD form and again multiply the numbers in sad form together. Let me take that again. Multiply the numbers, I mean the coefficients of the numbers in sad form. That is to mean 3 and 2. And then you multiply the numbers under the root sign together. So here you have 3 times 2, which gives us 6. Sad. Multiply the numbers in sad form. 2 times 3. Again, sad 6. That is the answer. So this is a bit different from addition and subtraction, whereby in addition and subtraction, for you to operate them, the numbers under the root sign must be the same. But here, in multiplication and also division, in fact, we can just do a, a multiplication and a division. These numbers do not have to be the same. So you can just take, uh, take another example. You have uh, 5 sub 2 times 2 sub 3. So if you multiply this, you will multiply the numbers, the coefficient of the number under the root sign. So you have 5 times 2, which is 10 roots. Multiply the numbers under the root sign, 2 times 3, you get 6. So 10 root 6 which is no different from division. Also, also, although division in SADs is very, very, uh, is not very common, but it is good that we know, but it behaves the same way as multiplication. For example, if you have roots, four roots, uh, seven divided by uh, two, root 3. So here you're, you're going to divide the numbers outside the, the root sign. So 4 divided by 2, you get 2. Root 7 divided by 3, you don't have a definite number, so 7 over 3. As simple as that. The numbers, the coefficient of the numbers under the root sign, then the numbers under the root sign together. Just like in multiplication. And the uh, that is what you need to understand in the operation of SADs. That is addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division.
it's as simple as that. So the next thing that we therefore need to know is the simplification of SADs. So how do we simplify SADs? So we'll take an example. So we, before that, Simplifying SADs. So how do we simplify SADs? Take, for example, root 72. So 72 as a number does not have a definite root, but you're required to simplify this number. So how do we simplify these SADs? So to simplify a SAD, you have to think of two numbers, which when you multiply, you get 72, Think of two numbers, when you multiply, you get 72. And one of those numbers must have a definite root and should not be more simplified any further after getting its root. For example, here, if you have 72, the two numbers which we can multiply to get 72 is say uh, 2 and 36. So you just write root 36 times 2. So in these two numbers, 36 has a definite root, and 2 doesn't. So after writing it that way, you can now proceed on to split these two. Remember, this is multiplication, so this is root 36 times root 2. Remember, in multiplication, we said you, just, you can take the numbers under the root sign, 32 times 3. The same thing, 36 times 2, to get 72. So here, we can now have... Uh, root 36 is obviously 6 root 2 and that is the answer. So in that case you have simplified that sad. Uh, why must we think of numbers which will give us a definite root and should not be simplified beyond that point? Take for example if somebody uh, does this Uh, so somebody X decides to, uh, uh, to pick the two numbers to be 9 and 8. Of course, this person is right because 9 times 8 is 72. So if you proceed on to split these two, 9 times root 8, the square root of 9 is 3. So you have 3 root 8. But remember, mathematically, this question can be simplified further. So you will need to go beyond this point because uh, 8 can be simplified. So to get 3 root 4 times 2 again because 4 has a definite root. So if you split this, you have 3 into root 4 times root 2. Root 4 is 2. So you have 3 into brackets 2 root 2. So 3 times 2, we get, so this is 2, so you have 3, I mean 6, eh? 6 root 2. So instead of going through this entire process, just pick two numbers, you multiply, you get that number. Again, when you get the square root of 1, uh, it, should not, it should not be able, it should not take you again or it should not create the, 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 the scenario whereby you will be required to simplify that number further. But of course, if you end up with such, you can still proceed on to simplify and end up with the same answer. Uh, there, and there, there is no harm with that. The only harm is stopping at this point. This can be a very, very serious uh, problem. You have to proceed and get to the final answer. Uh, that, that is the simplification of SADS. We can take another example and see how that one looks like. So I want us to take the example of, uh, so you can take a moment to solve this one before you see the, uh, the solution. This is an 
easy one? Root 18. So try and see if you will get the same answer as mine. So for 18, you should have gotten two numbers. Maybe, I hope you got 9 times 2, which will give you 18. And 9 has a definite root. So you have root 9 times root 2. Root 9 is 3 root 2. So I want to believe you got the same answer. Uh, so you will also try this one. Sad 108, simplify that and see whatever answer you're going to end up with. So the other example you can try is uh, Sad 108. And uh, that is generally what simplification of Sad is all about. So with that, we can now proceed on to something else. Still in uh, simplification of Sads, but in this case, we are going to simplify Sads by rationalizing the denominator. simplification of SADS by rationalizing the denominator. So let's see how is it different from uh, the simplification of SADS that we have just done. So just by the mention of the subtopic itself, by rationalizing the denominator, this means that uh, we are going to have a numerator and a denominator. That's uh, the point number one that we need to understand. So here we are going to have both the numerator and the denominator. So in this case, we only had uh, one number. We, it's not a fraction. So in this case, we are going to have a fraction. So we need to see how do you simplify a SADS involving a fractions. And of course, the denominator is going to be in a SAD form. So how do we simplify that? So that's what I want us to see, and that is what we are I'm calling a simplification of SADS by rationalizing the denominator. Still simplifying SADS, but in this case, by rationalizing the denominator. So let's see what's the difference, or how is it different from what we have just done. Of course, I've just mentioned the first difference is that this one will involve fractions. So simplifying SADS by by rationalizing the denominator. Denominator. So you have, say for example, 1 over sad 7. So these are fraction involving SADS, the denominator is in SAD form. How do we simplify this by rationalizing the denominator? In this case, you only required to multiply both the denominator and the denominator by that denominator, SAD7. So obviously you will notice that in the numerator 1 times SAD7 will remain to be SAD7 over SAD7 times SAD7. So 7 times 7 is 49. 
and the square root, and so we are going to have over sad 49. But we know that sad 49 is 7, or rather the square root of 49 is 7, so our answer will be root 7 over 7. Take note that you cannot cancel 7 and 7 because 7 is under the root sign and the denominator is not under the root sign. So we cannot cancel these two. So that remains to be our answer. So in that case, you will have simplified that sad. If you take another example, maybe 2 over sad 5. It's the same thing. You multiply this denominator by sad 5, sad 5. So you end up with a 2 sad 5 over sad 5 times sad 5 is sad 25, and the square root of 25 is 5. So our answer is 2 sad 5 over 5. You stop there. So that is how you simplify uh, the, 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 the sads by rationalizing the denominator. Rationalizing means we re reduce this irrational number to a rational number. You see, we have sad 7 which is irrational. Our answer is 7, which is rational. It's a rational number. It's not under the root sign. So that is the meaning of simplifying by rationalizing the denominator. But there are uh, different uh, cases. Which will now uh, be a little bit more involving. And this is now the climax of this topic called SADS. A, a good example is, uh, say you have 3 over SAD 5 minus SAD 2. So you will do the same thing uh, like what we've just done, but in this case, you don't just multiply by the denominator, but you multiply by the conjugate. The conjugate means you reverse the sign. So if it was sad 5 minus sad 2, you reverse the other to sad 5 plus sad 2. The reason why we are doing this, remember we are rationalizing the denominator, we want to reduce this to a perfect square. Remember, for a perfect square, uh, a minus b times a plus b is equals to a squared minus b squared. See, if you square a squared minus b squared, that number will now co be converted to a rational number. Remember, we are simplifying by rationalizing. We want to reduce this to a rational number. So the reason why we are reversing the sign to and calling it as a conjugate is to reduce this to a perfect square. Remember the quadratic identities form two. So if you reduce it to a perfect square, then in that case, you now end up with a perfect square when you simplify. As such, you have sad five plus sad two over sad 5 plus sad 2. So if you multiply the numerator, you're going to have 3 times sad 5. You have 3 sad 5 plus 3 times sad 2. You have 3 sad 2 over denominator. Now notice that our denominator here now is a perfect square. You have this times this. If you use brackets, so this is a minus b, a minus b, a plus b, a plus b, and that should simplify to a squared minus b squared, where a is sad 5, b is sad 2. So a squared, sad 5 squared is 5, minus b squared, sad 2 squared is 2. So our answer is 3 sad 5 plus 3 sad 2 over 5 minus 2 is 3. Notice that 3, 3, 3 is the same, they are similar, so we can factor out 3 in the numerator. 3 into, bra uh, into brackets, sad 5 plus sad 2 over 3. And that way you can cancel out that, so your answer is sad 5 plus sad 2. 
that becomes your answer. That is how you simplify that, uh, that sad by rationalizing the denominator. We can take a, a different example now, but uh, in this case, we have two parts. Uh, example, we can uh, use a different one, a five over sub three minus sub two minus two over sub three so sub two sub five sub three I mean plus sub two. So in this case, we are going to take uh, the LCM. Although there are people who will solve these two parts separately, then later bring them together, I really will not advocate for that, especially when you have a minus here. The best way to do it is by the use of LCM. So the LCM, obviously, will be sub 3 minus sub 2, sub 3 plus sub 2. That is the LCM. So take the LCM, divide by the first one, uh, that, that, that of minus will cancel out, so you're left with sad 3 plus sad 2. So you are 5 into sad 3 plus sad 2 minus 2. So you'll see the impact of this at this stage. So these are the positive one will cancel out. So you have sad 3 minus sad 2. So when you open the brackets, uh, a minute. So when you open the brackets here, you're going to have 5 sub 3 plus 5 sub 2 minus 2 sub 3. Now take note of this, minus minus becomes a plus. So plus 2 sub 2 over. Now again, notice the denominator is a difference of two squares. So that will simplify to a squared minus b squared. So sub 3 squared is 3 minus sub 2 squared is 2. So new, solve the numerator like terms, 5 sub 3 minus, remember the operation on sads, subtraction just minus, this is just the coefficient of the number in sad form. 5 minus 2, you have 3, so 3 sub 3, so 5 sub 2 plus 2 sub 2, that is 7 sub 2 over 3 minus 2 is 1. So your answer is 3 sub 3 plus 7 sub 2. It's as simple as that. So when solving this, uh, make a point of using the LCM. That way, you will have it very easy. So I want us to do another version of simplification of SADS, which is more or less the same as what we have just done. but uh, slightly different, particularly with the uh, denominator. So if you take the example, say 7 over sub 3 plus sub 2 minus 2 
2 over sad 3 plus sad 2. Here, you must notice that the denominator, if you get the LCM, will not be a difference of two squares. Why? Because we have a similar sign here, plus. Not minus plus or plus minus. The two are plus. So in this case, the LCM will be, this is the same as being asked, the LCM of 2 and 2. The LCM of 2 and 2 is 2. The LCM of 7 and 7 is 7. So the LCM of sad 3 plus sad 2, sad 3 plus sad 2, is sad 3 plus sad 2. So in this case, the LCM is uh, sad 3 plus sad 2. So the LCM divided by this, you get 1. So that is 7 minus LCM divided by so still 1. So 7 minus 2. You have 2 over sad 3 plus sad 2. But you have not rationalized because simplifying by rationalizing, that means the denominator must be a rational number. But here it is not. So we have to simplify this one further. So how do we simplify further? Now multiply by the conjugate. So 2 multiplied by the conjugate of this will be sad 3 minus sad 2 over sad 3 plus sad 2 multiply again by the conjugate minus sad 2. So the numerator will simplify to 2 sad 3 minus 2 sad 2 over, now notice that the denominator now is a difference of two squares. So we can now do a squared minus b squared. Sad 3 squared is 3 minus sad 2 squared is 2. So you now have 2 sad 3 minus 2 sad 2 over 3 minus 2 is 1. And that becomes our answer. So it's as simple as that. So notice the LCM is going to be different in this case. And the, on to the last thing in SADS. Uh, and this will be now SADS involving angles. And not just angles, but the special angles. You must recall the special angles which uh, you did in Form 2. So even as I erase this, you can take a moment to refresh your memory on uh, special angles. That is, uh, no, I won't give you to think about it first as we have this one ready. So uh, in Form 2 Trigonometry 1, we did special angles, which is uh, 30, 60 degrees, and uh, 45 degrees. So 30 and uh, 60 degrees uh, is represented using an equilateral triangle of dimensions 2, 2. So I want to divide this into two, which means this will be one, one, because equilateral, two, two, two. Uh, if it's equilateral, that means this will be 60. And since I've divided, that will be 30, 30, 60. Uh, pay focus to only one side, because we are interested in 30, 60, 30 and 60. So if this is two and this is one, the, the, the height will be, 2 squared minus 1 squared, you find the square root. 2 squared is 4, 1 squared is 1. So 4 minus 1 is 3, so we have root 3. So the height is root 3. So if you're given a sad, say simplify. Simplify a sine, sine 60 over... Uh, over cos 30 without using a calculator or a math table. So sine 60, sine from this table, sine from trigonometry, Sokatoa, 
sin is a uh, opposite of a hypotenuse. So sine 60 is a uh, root 3 over hypotenuse, which is 2, over cos 60. Cos is adjacent, so that will be root 3 again, divided by, because 30 is here, the hypotenuse, which is 2 again. So how do we simplify that? You see you have several sets of fractions. So the first thing is to eliminate one of these fractions. So to do that, you, you multiply this denominator here by 2, you also do the same thing here, such that this one will cancel out. So you have root 3 over, this will cancel out over root 3. But this already, this is still not in sad form. So we multiply here by root 3, by root 3, uh, which will give us sad 9 over sad 9. Sad 9 is 3, so we have 3 over 3, so the answer is 1. Uh, I have done this intentionally so that uh, later when you have other similar questions, you make a point of multiplying first. But it is mathematically correct to just uh, cancel out at this stage and get the answer as 1. So that is how you uh, work around thirds of uh, 30 and 60. How about 45? So you will recall that for 45 degrees, we were drawing a right angled triangle, not equilateral in this case. So equilateral is only for 30 and 60 degrees. For 45, you're going to have a right angled triangle whose height and base is one centimeter long. For the equilateral, we are going to use two centimeters. So that is uh, uh, conventionally accepted. You're going to use that throughout if you're considering special angles. So you have for 30 and 60, you're going to uh, draw uh, an equilateral triangle. For th uh, 45, we are going to use a right angled triangle, as you're going to see shortly. So, uh, 45, I've just said, you draw a right angle triangle, whose uh, base is 1, height is 1, this is 45, and obviously this is also 45. Uh, since this is 90, 90, 45, 45, that's 1, 8. So if this is 1, and this is 1, the hypotenuse should be 1 squared plus 1 squared to find the square root. So 1 squared is 1 plus 1, 2. So the hypotenuse will be root 2. So if you are told to simplify, for example, 8 over sine 45. Simplify without using a math table or a calculator. So in that case, you're going to represent it as 8 over sine 45. So if you take this angle, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So you have 1 over sad 2. Uh, and I've just said that uh, it is not advisable to simplify at this stage, to rationalize as it is. You're going to have very, very serious problems. So the best way to do it is one, eliminate one set of fractions. Because here you have 8 over 1 over sad 2. It doesn't feel good. So the best way to do it, multiply these parts by sad 2. Add two, such that you're going to have factor. Yeah, yeah. So you're going to have eight, eight over. So this sad will cancel out. So you have eight sad two over one. So that one is actually simplified as it is. You just have eight, eight sad two. Uh, how about if you have, uh, say, tan, is it tan? Sign. You have four over sign 60. Cos 
but so here you're going to have 4 over cos 30 cos is adjacent over hypotenuse this is a different example so adjacent is at 3 hypotenuse is 2 so you multiply this by 2 by 2 so that gives us 8 over 33 so this one is not simplified so you multiply by 33 33 so you have 8 33 over 3 so that is how you simplify that so you have to play around make sure you first of all eliminate one set of fractions that uh, would mark the end of that topic so the climax of SADS is rationalizing the denominator uh, and uh, the most common one is rationalizing by multiplying by the conjugate which means uh, you will have say sad 3 over sad 3 or sad 5 minus sad 2 something like that so that you're able to change the sign so getting the conjugate means you reverse the sign where you have plus you change it to minus where you have minus you change it to plus and uh, that marks the end of that uh, lesson i hope you've uh, learned something so we meet in the next uh, session.